Yeah, he literally says, like, he's like, well, you know, we've all had towels that don't dry you. I'm like, no, the fuck we haven't. And then he starts getting, he's like, well, you know, xenophobia. And you're like, really? Xenophobia? And he's like, yep. It's because we started letting all them Chinese towels in in 2006. <laughs> yeah. He might as well come out just, like, completely naked, sopping wet, being like, <laughs> I use my towel and I'm still sopping wet. There must be a better way. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, and apparently I'm powerless to stop it. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. So, you know who found. The event horizon of comedy. <laughs> <laughs> I we do. Did. We uh, fucking <laughs> did. When we watched this fucking show thing, I, whatever the fuck you want to call it. What, yeah. I don't know what this is. Yeah. Well, you know who found that is not on the fucking show today. I wonder why. <laughs> Unfortunately for us, Eli will not be able to join us today. And just as unfortunately for him, at least, our special guest masochist will be able to. Michael Marshall is the project director of the Good Thinking Society. He's the host of Be Reasonable and the co-host of Skeptics with a K. And if you don't know that by now, you never will. Marsh, welcome back, sir. Hey, thanks for having us back, guys. Lovely to be on. Uh, what did you make me sit through? I've sat through some <laughs> shit on this show, <laughs> but I've always known what it was, and I'm not sure I know what just happened to me. Yeah, neither do I. So I know we always kind of do this, right? Like almost every time you come on, you're like, wow, this was significantly worse than everything you've ever made me watch. And in a sense, it's always true, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like on a different <laughs> axis of worst. And I'm amazed that you keep finding different dimensions of wrong to continue to, to subject me to. But this is the worst thing I've seen on that particular axis. Yeah. Yeah, no, like in, in terms of misery per minute, I think this one might just be like top five in everything that we've ever done in terms of just hard to sit through each second of. <laughs> yeah, and no more photons. They're yeah. gone. <laughs> so... All right, so that's a lot of setup, but uh, we actually haven't told you what we're watching yet. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Christmas in New York. I hate that New York is in the title so right? much. Oh, yeah. Christmas in New York with Eric Metaxas. Mm hmm. It's the story of the Dunning Kruger effect. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> it's. An hour-long sketch comedy variety show starring Eric Metaxas, who clearly got told he was funny by a stripper and decided to make a comedy show. <laughs> wow, exactly. It is Dunning-Kruger comedy. And Marsh, how bad was this movie? Well... If you love the 1960s Dean Martin Christmas specials, but you really want them to be hosted by someone with all the talent and charisma of 2020 Dean Martin, you will love this Christmas special. God, even his references had been dead for decades, right? Yeah. All right. So, okay. A quick question before we get to the best worst. How hard can Eli go fuck himself for this one? Right, because he did this to us. He knew he wasn't going to be here when he chose this. I think Eli just did not want to sit there and watch someone attempt to deliver a sketch to stony silence because I think it was just sort of triggering him from memories he's had of various gigs gone wrong. Oh. I think that's the only reason he skipped out. Okay, all right. Now that actually I, makes a ton of fucking sense. I I enjoyed it. I liked it. <laughs> what? I, I enjoyed it. I'm trying to confuse Eli with his behavior. I don't, he, he won't okay. know what to do now. I, I got you. Okay, right, right. No, I'll play along. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. It's like clicking on random uh, products on Amazon so Jeff Bezos doesn't know what to recommend you. You just have yeah. to keep throwing him <laughs> off the scent with some, some distributed noise there. That's there right, Eli. We want to watch Eric Metaxas in the Briar Patch next week when you're not here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah. I'm going to go with best worst up next on YouTube. Oh, really? <laughs> so for me, that was Milton Friedman on Donahue from 1979. What? On Donahue? What? According to this 
Very advanced algorithm. According to mathematics, <laughs> if you like Eric and Texas, you will love everything that's wrong with America encapsulated in one single interview <laughs> no with shit. the goddamn godfather of trickle-down economics. <laughs> so, I actually have a very similar one in a roundabout way. Mine was uh, Best Worst YouTube Ads because follow along here, A... There was an ad break every two and a half goddamn minutes in this thing. B, it's <laughs> hyper conservative. And C, I live in Georgia. Oh, yeah. And D, the runoff election was 19 days away when I watched this. So, yeah, I saw so goddamn many slow motion clips of Raphael Warnock. Oh, so much black and white, John Awesome. Raw communism. Raw, raw, raw. I'm a black male. <laughs> and there's a Jew. <laughs> yeah, a mm -hmm. lot of that. A lot of that. Pop scares with sepia tone and <laughs> photo negative tone of his face. Well, mine, I had uh, best worst, no ending. It's <laughs> incredible. So they've got Victoria Jackson, who I had to look up. She used to be on SNL. And if you've got someone from the cast of SNL, surely you're going to expect her to roll with the punches, to improvise on the spot, to really keep that live energy. And so she does a few ad libs a couple of times. And at one point, Eric just gets so, so mad. He's like, stop the fucking ad libs right it's, now. Don't it's so, it's so good. good. Oh, he's, he's so mad. He's so angry with her. Furious at her. He <laughs> screams. At it's so good. He's so stupid, he can't have basic conversations that aren't on the teleprompter. That's the level of intellect that Erica Metaxa has. It's, what the fuck did you oh, say? So did you read that off the teleprompter? No, you didn't, because it's yeah. not up there. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was just talking about my pillow, which is my favorite pillow. <laughs> yeah, no, we were literally, uh, it's live and they're Christian away from him telling her to fuck off. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Once again, we found ourselves in the difficult position of trying to describe not funny in a humorous way. So we're going to take a minute to strategize. But when we come back, we'll dive into all the comedic lethargy of Christmas in New York with Eric Metaxas. All right, folks, welcome to the first writer's room meeting for the Eric Metaxas Christmas special. Here we all right, so uh, we're going to have some music in the show, some great towel advertisements, a few guest stars. Nice. And we're going to tie all that together with skit comedy. So let's start off with a, uh, a brainstorming session for some ideas for skits. All right. Uh, um, go. Uh, okay, so uh, what if... That's a great start. Okay, cool. Uh, what if Eric Metaxas had to, like run somewhere uh, okay and uh oh i didn't i didn't think he had a follow-up um he he gets there he gets there okay okay though that is a great try to uh, where he's I, running I, I, right I, no yeah not, i get I it like it, I just, it has a beginning it has an end but i feel like we're right. gonna need a little more than that uh dan okay. i look like you had your hand raised hmm? uh no 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 i didn't i thought i thought you did I, mm -mm, no, no. Uh, both my hands have been under the table the entire time. Oh, it looked like maybe you were going to. Uh, mm -mm, mm -mm. Yeah, I thought you were going to say. Well, uh, do you have any ideas? Any uh, skits? Uh, all right. Uh, what if he potato? What if he potato? What? Yeah, sorry. I panicked. Oh, OK. All right. So um, no shame in this. Let's just throw this out. Uh, have any of us ever seen a. Uh, a funny hmm. thing. Uh, uh, mother doesn't let me watch secular television. So. Right. Well, no, and 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 right that she should. No. No. Uh, I read Family Circus, although I, I do find the rest of the comics a little risque. Yeah, a lot risque. Yeah, a lot risque. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Kathy is a promiscuous little strumpet. It's mm. inappropriate. Yeah, absolutely. Is what it is. Absolutely. Calm down. Sorry. Okay. I just get. Uh, do we do we have any other experiences with humor? Does does yellow bile count? I honestly have no idea. All right. Well, for all we know, my running somewhere idea is hilarious. You know what? That's actually a very good point. We're yeah, going we to roll know. with that. We're going to roll with that. Any other ideas? No. Doesn't matter. That's locked in. Meeting adjourned. I'm the vice president of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> Not for long, motherfucker. My wife and mother. <laughs> 
And we're back for the breakdown. And this movie is going to offer up a pretty solid reason to hate it, even before the title puts Eric Metaxas's name <laughs> on it. That's when we learned that this was sponsored by the Museum of the Bible. Rough. Yeah. First thing. Mm -hmm. First thing in this movie show, whatever, sponsored by the Museum of Counterfactuals, <laughs> who <laughs> got in trouble for buying stolen art relics from black market smugglers employed by Hobby Lobby. Yes. Wow. That's the start of this thing. Yep. The guys who found out that all of the Dead Sea Scroll pieces they had tested were fake, so they didn't have the other pieces tested. <laughs> 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 they tried to cover it up and they got caught. It's the oh, best. God. Yeah. So, OK, then the title comes up Christmas in New York with Eric with Texas. And just in case you didn't know where that was, they put a little pin in New York City for you. Yeah. I mean, New York wasn't the bit that I needed introduced to. I heard <laughs> of New York before. That's famous. Oh, New York <laughs> City. City. <laughs> they meant the city. In New York. Maybe you've heard of it. It's in New York. Fuck. <laughs> And uh, just to add some accent to that, we get Eric Metaxas inside the camera with his mouth wrapped around it being like, <laughs> New York. Oh, God, we were so much closer to his face than anyone ever wanted to be. I, look, I don't think conservatives should get to use liberal cities in their goddamn credits. They should have to do this shit in Waycross, Georgia, right? Absolutely. Christmas in Waycross, <laughs> goddamn Georgia with Eric Metaxas. How about that? Banned. And you're definitely not allowed to do it in like a stalker voice, like you're calling all breathy <laughs> from inside the house to New York, being like New York. No, oh. that would be fine if he did have to do it in Waycross, Georgia. Waycross, Georgia. Yeah, That'd right. right. Yeah, that that sounds very appropriate there. It's a better sounding Waycross. <laughs> the the fucking credits come up. We get we get Victoria Jackson first. First time Victoria Jackson's ever been lead billing in any fucking thing. We go downhill <laughs> from Victoria Jackson. I mean, would you definitely say it's downhill? Because next to it, we've got the couple from Duck Dynasty. So they are really <laughs> pulling out the big guns. They are clearly uphill from Victoria yeah, Jackson. Okay, all right, all right. Yep, no, that's fair. They're delightful in comparison. And I, I wrote in my notes, this is just going to be wall to wall Americans I have never heard of, isn't it? This is the whole yeah, right. thing. It's going to be a succession of people. Like, I'd never heard of Eric Metaxas until you met made me watch this oh. but I've subsequently seen him in lots of other places like he started here and he's spread I'm worried he's metaxasized <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's malignant well done, sir. it's official <laughs> yeah, he's definitely malignant all right so yeah so then we see him he's they, they start with this little um Citizen Kane rip off but they don't know that you're supposed to do something with it right he just whispers New York a la Rosebud, and then that's it. They're done with mm. Citizen Kane, right? Well, until they bring it back beautifully, we'll get to it. Oh, no, you're right. They do, don't they? Yeah, okay. So Victoria Jackson wakes him up from his Citizen Kane nightmare, and my God, that woman looks stung. She looks yeah, I'm, I mean, he should have. He really would have preferred to stay in the nightmare than to be woken up by that. Because I had no idea who she was, and I just thought it was Alex Jones doing a Miss Piggy impersonation. That's the one that's exactly what she looks like. <laughs> yes, absolutely. That is, that okay, is. so imagine the Muppet universe. That's perfect. They got to have hentai, right? <laughs> she looks like hentai in the Muppet universe for Kermit the Frog. Like it would be humanish, right? Yeah, if you went through his Pornhub history. <laughs> Sorry, Heath, do you think there's hentai in the Muppets universe? Uh, absolutely. Do you think like, that's Why how they, they ended up with the cross babies between the pig and the frog? Do you think there was some thing going on there? Or like, where are you getting the hentai from? Yeah, yeah. Well, they did end up having cartoon babies eventually, the Muppets did. That is true. That is true. Yeah. Yep. This is making a lot of sense. A lot of them are siblings. <laughs> It all makes sense. All right. So so they start doing this skit, Victoria Jackson and Eric Metaxas do. And I, and, I, and I use that in the loosest possible sense of the term, right? It's like watching something somebody's fucking kids made and then they made you sit through it as though they were mm. your fucking kids, right? <laughs> this whole time I was just like, please be a sketch about Phil Hartman's last day on earth. I really oh, hope God. that's what this is. <laughs> Eric Metaxas looks exactly like Phil Hartman, and it's very disturbing. Wow, I didn't think about that, but yeah, that is kind of creepy. So yes, but the crux of the little bit that they're doing here is that Victoria Jackson forgot to buy the coffee, and he's late for his Christmas special. Whatever will he do? 
So he runs to the window and they do this little Christmas carol bit where he's yelling to the boy on the street to go get him a, a coffee. But it, it makes no sense because they haven't <laughs> set it up in any kind of, they don't no. know how to set anything up and anything they do manage to set up, they don't know how to deliver on it. Because right. he says, what day is it? Well, the spirits have done it all in one night. It's like, what spirits? You haven't showed us any spirits. That doesn't right. make any sense in the, the setup you've given us here. Yeah. yeah. Marsh, you said deliver. I don't think they know about that part. <laughs> no. So they do setups a lot. Mm. <laughs> And I think they think that's a ju- that's done. They're, they done. finished their job. Yep, exactly, exactly. I, knock, knock, who's there? I told you we're done. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so come on in. Yeah, okay, so he's, he's yelling to the boy. He's like, oh, can you go to the coffee place around the street? He says, you mean that coffee place that shut down for racial sensitivity training? Pause for applause break. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, my God. <laughs> we'll wait for that punchline to land. Strap the fuck in, people. Racial sensitive <laughs> training is the punchline here. Why would you meant if a coffee shop had to shut down, literally shut down for racial sensitivity training? You don't announce that you're a regular. That's <laughs> so crazy what must have happened at that coffee shop. Okay, so no, this is a take on Starbucks. Like Starbucks had that thing where they shut all of their stores down for a couple hours one day for racial sensitivity training because they had they had that viral video where they kicked out a couple of black people for waiting in their restaurant while black. Mm, mm. So he's he's making fun of racial sensitivity training in general and and uh, Starbucks's use of it. Oh, and he's admitting he's a regular at Starbucks with their G cups. <laughs> he's just a bad Christian then. <laughs> So the guy's like, yeah, I'll get you a coffee. And he throws him a duck. And the guy's like, why would you throw me a duck? And I'm like, okay, so the characters in this show are now asking for clarification on the jokes. And the clarification, <laughs> he gets a clarification and it's not useful. He says, why would you throw me a duck and not a chicken? And Eric Metaxas' punchline to that is, I haven't got time to tell you. But then don't include it in the script. <laughs> yeah. Don't include him asking the question in the script. You don't need to do I didn't force didn't, you to do that. We didn't come back to it or anything. Punchline TBA nailed it. <laughs> and this is where I wrote, I just know that 80% of my notes, this entire thing is going to be verbatim excerpts from the script because there's nothing you can say <laughs> about it that it doesn't say itself just by giving you the words they've said. Exa- okay, exactly. All right. <laughs> So now it's time for him to spin in himself into a cheap suit and then run through New York through a wacky montage. Yeah, Ugh. this is one of his 7,000 changes of jackets in this <laughs> one hour thing. Yes. For no reason. He's just like, better change out of this velvet jacket that I own. The professors who are, you know, disgracefully leaving their university wear. Did everybody see it? <laughs> everybody saw my awesome velvet jacket? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tuxedo. Awesome. All right. So, yeah, so he starts running through New York and then he's running past all like, you know, familiar New York landmarks, all of them within like three blocks of each other. <laughs> but if you know New York, you'll notice that. And, and this whole montage, it's more boring and badly shot than like a stranger's holiday video of New York. That's what it feels like they're subjecting us to here. Oh, yeah, uh. exactly. Right. And, and so I, I wrote my notes here. I'm like, oh, how awesome would it be if somebody just sucker punched the shit out of this montage? <laughs> but instead... He comes across three women that he paid to pretend to recognize him is a thing that <laughs> happened in real life. Right. He runs by and they're like, wait, aren't you the famous Eric Metaxas? Now, this is the first time that will happen. It happens about eight more times in the next 30 seconds of this special. Yeah, sir. Yeah, it's, sir. It's, Holy shit. Phil Hartman. I thought you died. <laughs> hey, fuck you. <laughs> Yeah, because he he tells them, he's like, oh, I don't have time to take a selfie with you. I'm very important, very busy, but come be in my show. All right. <laughs> and then he, he comes across the guy in the horse-drawn carriage, and that guy also recognizes him. He's like, aren't you the famous Eric Metaxas also? Does he definitely recognize him? Because he's very clearly been paid to recognize him, but even mm-hmm. though he's been paid to do it, he still doesn't quite remember the name he's meant to be recognizing. Yeah, like, right, aren't right. you Eric <laughs> 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 Alex Eric Jones? <laughs> hey, fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> and then, so he gets out of the the, the ride with the, the horse-drawn carriage, and he's like, all right, this isn't going fast enough. I got to get downtown fast for my thing. 
I better take this sightseeing bus through Times Oh yeah, Square. Right. Yeah, that'll get you right there. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. I love that. Like, obviously, if you're trying to have a montage of getting through the city quickly, you would be in the subway at some point. But Eric Metaxas wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but he'll get on a sightseeing bus. Yeah. That's, <laughs> you're, you're kicked out of New York, man. I, right. I'm so angry. He lives in that brownstone near Central Park oh, that he shot from. God. I bet he's got lenders bagels in his home somewhere. too. <laughs> All right, so so now we cut for, we cut to the stage for this show, right? This was all this entire like nine minute thing was all the opening skit for his stage show, apparently. Yeah, and and most of it is just him miming to Elton John "Step Into Christmas," which is yep. I would say the most obnoxious <laughs> of the Christmas songs anyway. So they're really setting the stage <laughs> for how hateful this entire thing is going to be. But he thinks it's really cool that he's on a bus miming to Elton John, and it's. It's not even the only time he'll be miming unironically to a song that isn't very good yep. in this hour long bit. No, this is God. the better of those times, actually. Mm. Yeah, it is. It <laughs> is. Elton John song. All right. So disappointed. So now we we cut to the stage where this whole dumbass thing is gonna is gonna take place. And we get this very, very quick audience pan right off the bat. And it's one of those trying to get warm audiences. So if you live in New York, you know this audience, right? This is the audience of people that had to stand outside waiting for some other thing. And then a bunch of people roped them in and they're like, we have warmth. And they're like, yeah, all right. It's like an hour, you know, right. right. Yeah, there are like 40 <laughs> or 50 people in this audience as well. Yeah. We, come, we see it later on. We see a proper shot. They try to hide as much as possible the empty rows in the theater. But later we do get to see them. And I just wrote that I, <laughs> I'd be disappointed with a turnout this small at a skeptics in the pub talk that I'd given. Yep. And one that the group had forgotten to advertise <laughs> and then inadvertently told people the wrong venue for. That's the level <laughs> of audience we've got here. <laughs> They're all like, Eric Metaxas? No, 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 not now, not now. You're just the audience right now. You're just the audience. <laughs> yeah, oh, speaking of which, so yeah, so he's, he starts doing his opening monologue and those girls that he invited from before come, you know, the rock attacks, they come going by. Now, three of them are kicking like the rock ats, and then there's a fourth one who can only get her leg bout to her thigh and I love her so goddamn much. <laughs> Maybe she thinks it's just not worth it. Like, may I don't go full height for this kind of money. You, you've paid waist high, no more. Exactly, yeah. I'll kick for Alex Jones, but... <laughs> so, and, and they come out in the middle of his talk, in monologue to the point where I was just like, oh my God, did they miss a cue? Is that how that was supposed to happen? Now, once we see how bad they are at skit comedy, you realize that, no, that was probably supposed to happen exactly then. But at the moment, it's like, wow, they must have fucked up the cue. Yeah. By the way, this is all happening at the TBN Theater. Yes. Uh -huh. Owned by the billionaire Crouch family. The Trinity Broadcasting Network. That's what they are. And this is a literal quote. The president of the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary called TBN a huge embarrassment to evangelical Christianity for decades. That's rough. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah, compared to the Southern Baptist fucking convention. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> this is the this is the white Apollo Theater in <laughs> Manhattan. So, so yeah, so so he does this little opening monologue, which mostly consists of fucking Bill de Blasio being a communist. Oh God. And he bails out of those jokes. Like there's one line where he's like, you know, it, what happened, Leo, in the old days, but before Mayor de Blasio made it. Always winter, never Chris. And he bails out of this joke like four times. Even he can't be asked to get through this lackluster script. And that that is setting the tone. <laughs> well, and this is the first time where we noticed that like the... So I love the audience in this show so goddamn much. Now we'll get... Because there's one skit in particular where they turn on him and basically start just throwing potatoes at him or whatever. <laughs> but this is the first hint that we get that they're not into this. Because he says, you know, a lot of people say New York isn't Christmassy enough, but... Was the night before Christmas was written right here. And then the audience just doesn't do anything. They're like, do you have a joke about that or anything? And he's like, that's kind of the thing that an audience would clap for, right? That there was a poem. <laughs> it's, you're such a long, rough <laughs> it pause. It and he's is. just like, right down the street. Fuck you guys, nobody. <laughs> Twas the night before great. That poem invented reindeer, by the way. I don't know if you know, but they invented reindeer in that poem. The audience is just like, wait, are we supposed to clap for the proximity of the poem's genesis right now? Oh, okay. 
I guess. I mean, yeah, my hands says will on be the fucking warmer. signs. Clap. <laughs> <laughs> and then he tries to do okay. So there's a there's a choke level that's one step above dad joke. We call them in the business Andy Wilson jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so he tries to do the the Andy Wilson joke of like we got some great guests for you. Maybe you've heard of you know, and then you name two famous people, and they're like, yeah, couldn't get them. Instead, we got these people. But he fucks it up so bad because he uses two people who have been <laughs> dead for so long. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Bob Hope and Dom Delwey. <laughs> Maybe you've heard of Bob Hope. Do you think he's come in? Because he's been dead 16 years. It'd be weird if he came. <laughs> Bob Hope and Dom DeLuise. And then he's like, well, Victoria Jackson is here, though. <laughs> it's so sad. <laughs> so, yeah, he's like, we have a, min a many amazing guests, one of whom you've heard of. <laughs> you know? uh, Duck Dynasty guy is going to be here. He's pretty excited about that. Oh, Jesus Christ, this is painful. Oh, there's, there's one joke that I, I, I hated so much, I basically did a full critique of as well. Because <laughs> the joke as delivered is, you know, the uh, Aramaic word for Bethlehem is actually Lincoln Tunnel. <laughs> and there is so much to unpack about how they fuck that gag up. Because I think, I think they're going for, you know, the word Bethlehem is actually Aramaic for Lincoln Tunnel. Yeah. Which at uh -huh. least there's a thing that you'd be going to. But the thing is, one, the Aramaic, Aramaic word for Bethlehem is Bethlehem, I imagine. I would think, yeah. That's where they got that from. <laughs> yeah. Right. Lincoln Tunnel is not the Aramaic word for anything, let alone Bethlehem. But even if it was, a tunnel is a way of getting to a place. So why would you pick that when Bethlehem was the place they were getting to? You pick something else to, to compare to Bethlehem or, or to compare. But you picked the wrong genre of thing because no one's going to the Lincoln Tunnel to be in the Lincoln Tunnel. That's the one thing we know about Bethlehem is they were going to Bethlehem to be in Bethlehem, not because it was en route to fucking Cairo. <laughs> That's it. Well, that's the most bizarre thing about it. Despite the three things that you listed in ways they, they fucked it up, the joke still doesn't work if you get all of those right. No, no it doesn't. <laughs> Jesus, they're bad at this. All right. So now, now they're going to take another crack at skit comedy here. So we head over to the North Pole's HR department. Can you imagine? And scene. Premise done. <laughs> That's the premise. Might as well have done, yes. What if there was an HR department in the North Pole? Cut. Yep. Done. I, I did write down that before the sketch even started, I, I wrote down that they are going to spend less time and, and put less skill into the writing of this sketch than one of the ad skits this show does to just throw away, about like un unionizing elves or something like that, that you guys yeah. just write and throw away. Okay, well, they put exactly the amount of effort that I did making intentionally bad jokes. I was like, oh, Santa gets replaced by... Like Jeff Bezos, I bet, or something like that. <laughs> Literally, that's the next thing that happens. Yes, yep. It is. Yep. So Victoria Jackson is playing the HR department lady who's telling Santa about all the problems with Santaism. And you, she's it's like, she has this one joke where she's like, you know, today it's coming down somebody's chimney is considered, now it's written, I'm sure, breaking and entering. Those are the words that she's supposed to be saying. <laughs> bon mo, bon mo. I'm a real person oh, who's laughing at this joke in the studio audience. Wow. Hilarious. There's this, that joke elicits this three person laugh track that was so bad. I assumed that the two of them l watched back over their own skit and laughed in other people voices when it came up. It was so bad. <laughs> I just assumed it was like the crew members sort of laughing at how bad it was and then they mistook that for a genuine laugh <laughs> <laughs> and just kept, kept it in. Because the thing is, Victoria Jackson, her performance here is, well, it feels a lot like she's seeing every line for the first time at the moment she reads it. Like yes. she's not bothered investing in this. She hasn't read the script ahead of time. She's reading every single line as she needs to read it. Kind of like me doing an ad read for this show. I'm right. doing it. it's like, oh, okay. It turns out that's what my favorite, my personal favorite meal is. Is it? Weird. Oh, I'm really into tacos. It turns out. Right, you right. love pork carnitas tacos. I know that about you with Monterey Jack. That's real. So, what's amazing is that ad hasn't come up yet in the show. So, what the fuck are they talking about? That is his favorite. All right. So yeah. So they start doing this bit, and the whole bit is supposed to be. Can you imagine if Santa had to confront cancel culture, right? That's what it is in their mind. But they don't know. They, they can't come up with any jokes that use that premise. So instead, they're just pointing out things like, yeah, you're not allowed to, like, whip animals anymore or go down people's <laughs> chimneys. 
Right. That's it. And at a certain point, somebody like leaned over the laugh track button and didn't realize he'd done it for a good two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, th there are some very small pockets of ideas that might be considered half funny that have somehow made it into the script. But any one of those are just ruthlessly snuffed out by the performance. A bit like after a massacre where one soldier has to go around and like stab randomly at the pile of bodies just in case anyone <laughs> survived. <laughs> God. It is that the comedy is equivalent comedy of style. being that guy. Yeah, exactly. yes. Yes. I mean, at one point they make a joke about Blitzen using the N word, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Is is am I mistaken? That's literally what happened. No, it's not exaggerating. That's literally a joke. Yep. In this, yeah, and, yep. and 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 the joke is, man, they should go easier on Blitzen, right? That's the direction that the joke is coming from. Yes. It's, about, it's about heritage. That word. It's not. <laughs> it's so. not which well, yeah, because they 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 use that to you know like speaking of using the N word, let's defend Roseanne Barr. <laughs> <laughs> oh, rough. Yeah, they're talking about how like one tweet can end a career, you know, just like Roseanne Barr. Apparently, her her career got ended by a tweet. I don't know. I thought yeah, it was, was really was, going strong right before <laughs> that. <an> awful asshole. <laughs> she was on top of the world. I can't wait to watch Roseanne Barr start competing for jobs with Victoria Jackson on shit like this, because that's happening. <laughs> well, I'm like 90% sure that Eli announced that it was Roseanne Barr in this, on the last episode when he threw forward to it. So that's the level she's currently at with the, <laughs> yeah, the Victoria no, Jackson. Yeah, no, he absolutely level. said that she, she is not in this, by the way. If you've been no, listening along, waiting for her to show up. No, it's, it's just Victoria Jackson. Jackson fighting against that Xanax very, very hard <laughs> and losing more and more. And I have to point this out because this is so fucking funny and it's going to come back later. Victoria Jackson is doing this thing that people sometimes do when they're doing a skit and they haven't read it before and it's not well written where they just start adding lines at the end to try to make it sound more natural or adding words. So she's done with the skit as it's written. And Eric Metaxas is trying to cut in and she's like actively rewriting it. So he has to constantly start talking and then stop and talk again. And I only point that out because <laughs> that sets the seeds for an amazing confrontation that we're going to get to later. <laughs> oh, it's it's the absolute greatest. It's the absolute greatest. But when they've got that line about how one tweet will end Santa's career, I love the fact that they brought that up just after they said about how, you know, he watches children all the time. And that's a, a huge yeah. invasion of privacy that triggers kids. And then he complains that one tweet, you know, do something wrong, one tweet lend your career. And it's like, yeah, you're right. Feeling constantly monitored and worried you'll be punished for any minor indiscretion isn't comfortable, is it? Santa Claus. Santa Claus. <laughs> Eric Metaxas also. Yeah, meta. Right. <laughs> yeah, literally, this sketch is about how Eric Metaxas is triggered by the word triggered existing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what it's about. Yeah. No, I think you're exactly fucking right. You can't yell slurs at his favorite coffee shop anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but I think there's one point where she's made like, she says, oh, I've got, there's some things you can't be doing. I've made a list. And he's like, list, list, how dare you? Santa invented lists. Yeah, like, what? Yeah, Santa invented lists because before that, all items had to be one item. Just, just <laughs> one item. You couldn't have multiples of items. <laughs> All right, yeah, but the punchline here is that Santa gave her a call for Christmas and she doesn't want it because coal is a fossil fuel and they don't like fossil fuels. Those liberals in the HR department, they won't let you say the N-word. They, <laughs> they don't like it at all. All right, well, I'll tell you what. Clearly, everyone involved with this special needs a reminder of what the fuck sketch is supposed to mean. So we're going to pause for a quick any goddamn thing but this, but we'll be back soon with even more Christmas in New York with Eric Metaxas. Mm. 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 Hey, Heath, what mm. you doing there, buddy? Are you uh, mm. eating cheese like an apple? Eat, yeah, it's sort of this wheel of cheese, round. Makes sense. This, Sorry, do you, do you think apples are shaped like a wheel? I, it's, I, I'm not. You, you know, I'm, I'm, you know eating, I'm, it doesn't matter. I'm yeah. moving past it. I'm just moving straight on past that. Uh, look, I, Good. all I'm saying, right, is I think you should start thinking about making entire meals out of food. You know, just sometimes. Entire meals of food? What am I, Jude Law? No, I don't have time for setting up elaborate dinners with multiple foods like a fancy person. Well, why don't you just try HelloFresh? What's HelloFresh? 
A HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. Uh, they send you fresh, pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. So you can skip those trips to the grocery store. Hmm. They make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. All right. Go on. Oh, that wasn't enough, okay. Uh, well, it's uh, super flexible. Uh, you can easily change your delivery days or meal plan preferences, and you can skip a week whenever you need to, just right on the app there. I'd like two more points about that, if you don't mind. Okay, well, uh, one of those is uh, about 90% of the ingredients are sourced directly from growers to ensure peak flavors and ripeness. Okay. And uh, there's something everyone will enjoy, including 20-minute meals, low-calorie versions, vegetarian, kid-approved recipes, and more. One of my favorite things on there is the pork carnitas tackle with pickled onion and Monterey Jack cheese. Oh, Monterey Jack. Like like a wheel of it right next like on the side right next no, to the No, not not the a wheel next to the taco. It's actually it. shredded on top. It's pretty cool. Oh. Nice. Okay, that that sounds easier than than what I was picturing. Okay. So, how do I sign up? You just need to go to hellofresh.com slash GAM80 and use the code GAM80 at checkout to get $80 off, including free shipping. Okay, so just to be clear, you're saying Go to HelloFresh.com slash GAM80 and use the code GAM80 at checkout to get $80 off, including free shipping. That's absolutely correct. Great. I, I am in. So, uh, you want a couple grabs of this jelly or what? No, I don't want to have what I can only assume is loose handfuls of jelly. Okay. What are you, Dame Judy Dench? Talking to you is such a weird experience. Like, I do not know how to respond to like, literally any of the things that you say. Jelly balls. Jelly balls. Catch it. Hi, uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Metaxas. Yes. Yeah, uh, I'm Brandon, and I'm going to be your music director for the big TBN special. Great, great, great. So uh, let me introduce you to the rest of the crew. This is Sean, my publicist. This is my agent, Gary. This is Bob. He's the head writer. And uh, these are my recognizers, John, Marianne, and Todd. Sorry, these are your, your recognizers? Do you say recognizers? Uh, recognizers, yeah. Uh, they, they rush ahead of me wherever I'm going and recognize me as I walk by. They recognize you. Rec yeah, it's like, that's the name of the, the job. So like, I I'll walk by mm -hmm. and one of them be like, oh my God, are you Eric Metaxas? the famous conservative radio host and best-selling author. I'll be like, yeah, 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 that's me. Okay, I see, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, and they'll like beg me to take selfies with them. And and of course I won't because I'm in far too much of a hurry. I have so many important conservative radio host things to do. And, and then they'll rush around behind me and maybe like cut through a hotel lobby and they'll recognize me again a few blocks down. We just like keep doing that. And And that's all they do. <laughs> no, it's not all they do. Of course not. Okay, okay, fine. So, right, like, right. when I take a taxi, for example, they'll drive alongside and try to take pictures of me. And, like, uh, when I'm eating at an outdoor cafe, they'll stand across the street and ask passing strangers if I look like Eric Metaxas to them, which, of course, I do because I am the Eric Metaxas. There's lots of different stuff they do. Marianne is actually my full time stalker, too. Aren't you, Marianne? I sure am, boss. Yep. You you pay a woman to stalk you. Yeah. And let me tell you, it is not cheap either. That restraining order stays on her record no matter what. It sure does, boss. All right, all right, right. Um, look, please don't take this the wrong way, but can you not see how some people might see this as you know, really sad and pathetic? Mm, I don't know. I I hang out with... Victoria Jackson and the My Pillow guy. It's like sad and pathetic mascot theory. You know the mascot theory? Yeah, got well played. Well played. Right? Can you give me a promo code for a pillow boss? No, shut the fuck up. Okay, okay. And we're back, and apparently we haven't suffered enough yet because we're gonna open up this section on their special musical guest, Melanie <laughs> Penn. They've had one sketch. Yep. And they're already moving. To <laughs> oh wow, they have. Guests. That is brutal. All right. So how do we describe Melanie? So evil universe Anna, right? <laughs> <laughs> she is very interesting looking. She looks like, okay, so imagine Victoria Jackson, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This person, what's her name? Who's the musical guest? Melanie Penn. Melanie Penn looks like 
the nesting doll two or three below Victoria Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> She's wearing this fucking polyurethane coated dress of some sort, rhyming the words possible and impossible in her chorus. <laughs> yes. Well, it's 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 possible, which rhymes with impossible, which then rhymes with po possible again. Uh, the, <laughs> the full gamut. Right the full gamut. Possible again. Oh, God. And, and she has the platonic form of vacant expression. It is just dead behind the eyes. Just looking at her made me actively stupider. There is no hole in her head that didn't look like something was about to crawl out of it. Exactly. <laughs> and she's playing the guitar for no fucking reason. It's so bad. She can't play the guitar. No, she keeps missing she, notes. She's, she's holding a guitar. Like, I'm pretty sure the piano, there's a piano player. I'm pretty sure that guy can handle playing the root every four bars as a pluck <laughs> <laughs> with, with a piano oh, key. It's so bad. Also, if she was a boss villain, I would aim for the teeth. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? The acoustics of those teeth are actually having an effect on this song. <laughs> and her, her guitar playing, it's so bad that I half expected her at some point to like, pause, wait, 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 I've got this, I've got this. And just like, <laughs> yeah. restretch for a clock. Wait, 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 no, no, no. Glenn, Hold on, I didn't tune Glenn, it, I didn't tune it. Glenn. Hold on, no, 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 strum, 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 strum. I'm going to do strum now. She start, it was so rough. She's doing the pluck. <laughs> every four bars the root note and then she tries to start strumming but she can't get into the right rhythm for nope. so long nope the piano player's so pissed he's furious <laughs> she starts strumming like me starting to dance like, it's this long process and you never get I never get uh, there I'm never actually dance the word the <laughs> verb dance is not what I end up doing at any moment Yep, well, the, and the verb play is not what she ends up doing. So, yeah, no, perfect <laughs> analogy. So, yeah, so that goes on for 27 goddamn years. Yeah, I have no idea how long it was or what happened in it. I I definitely watched it, but I can't remember very much or any of it. I, like, I went into some sort of fugue state. I was sort of hypnotizing <laughs> the fugue state. It was so strange. It's like, it's like a self-defense mechanism the body has. <laughs> yeah, a fugue of the exactly three chords that she knows over and over oh, and over again. Geez, I, would, would we say nose? At one point, the piano player looks over. He's like, oh, are you, are you, tr you trying a fourth chord over there? And she's like, fuck you. I was good, but no, no, no. No, I'm not. No, no, I won't. I could. <laughs> so you see how good I am at G? You think I'm ready for a fourth fucking quarter? <laughs> <laughs> owie, owie, my finger. I got a cramp. I got a cramp. No, three. We're doing three chords. <laughs> All right. So now it's time to make fun of Greeks because, hey, it's not racist if they're European, right? So and, and it actually even starts with a, a, like Eric Metaxas going, well, as, as you guys know, my dad's Greek, so I'm totally allowed to do this. Why would we know that? Why would any of us know that? <laughs> like, I've never heard of him. I haven't memorized his fucking Ancestry.com yeah, page. Right. <laughs> well, you know, people recognize me in New York all the time. It happens constantly. You saw in the intro. <laughs> oh, but just before we get to the, the Greek character he's about to cut to as well, he says, I apologize in advance. We weren't really able to edit this, which that first of all, that apology has come 20 minutes too late into <laughs> this entire thing. But he says it over like several shots that cut from one yeah. shot to another shot, which is editing. So yep. I can only assume he means we weren't really able to edit as in they lacked the skill rather than the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> like we gave it a go, but it, I, I mean, don't we really cut call it, it together. <laughs> they had to edit him explaining that they weren't going to edit what they would yes. have to edit. <laughs> well, and, and so... I, so you assume that that's the setup for a joke where he's just going to like things are going to go progressively longer or something or there's going to be a fight that you normally would edit out. OK, th that would have been funny. Mm. Right. But none of that happened. There was no reason for him to say that. No, no. he was done with the premise. Christmas plus Greek done. Yep. <laughs> right. Well and, well, and also, OK, so they this is so goddamn heavily edited because it clearly like Metaxas could not get six words through without fucking something up, right? So it constantly we're cut to his feet or we're cutting to something on his desk, right? There's all of these just band-aid cuts <laughs> constantly in mm. it. Why bring that up and have us looking for that? Yes. Okay. 
Speaking of the desk, Pop! I know exactly what you're going to talk about now. What was happening here? So <laughs> clearly, somebody in this writer's room was like, "All right, he's Greek, right?" We said we're doing a Greek guy. What's a Greek thing? Ah, uh, golden mask of Agamemnon, but just not on <laughs> yes. the wall. I was what? thinking sitting loose on the desk. <laughs> That's Greek, right? It's Greek. Yeah, exactly. He's Greek. It's Greek. And it was hard because watching it, I saw that. And then throughout the sketch, they keep talking about him wanting to light a cigarette. And I assumed, because I thought this was a comedy sketch, that somebody was going to get that and use it as an ashtray. And we found that that's just an ashtray of the Mask of Agamemnon. But no, because there you this go. isn't real comedy. None of this happens. Nothing happens. No. Right. But that would have been fine. What's so funny is like, we kept trying to find a way that this was a joke, but nothing ever was. No, nothing happens. It was just like, this is Dr. Haralambos Chamakalokalokalis. First of all, not an MD, offensive. <laughs> but the whole thing is just Eric Metaxas doing a voice. That's yep. it. Well, well he's got a funny fair. mustache, but yeah, he's no, got it's a mustache. A, yeah, he's got a mustache a, as well. It's a mustache and like... But it's really just the voice. And yeah. I, I'd make fun of using voices to cover lack of content here, but I feel bad. Eli's not here to defend himself. So like, I'm not, not going to mention that. <laughs> yeah. And, and apparently the whole shtick here is boy, them Greeks are a bunch of assholes, huh? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. It, it's not fair to say there's no punchlines in in this whole bit. I mean, I've got a punchline I've written out here. He says, Was there a punchline? The line? name the Hamalokalos has been in our family a long time. That's why we're called the Hamalokalos family. A, a punchline <laughs> there. And, then, and, and my reaction there was the exact same as the audience's, right? <sighs> it's like, well, yeah. <laughs> so, so painful. So painful. And the thing is, he even tries to, like, he asked the sound guy who's micing him up, he asked him about his tattoos, because, and this is very clearly him trying to sort of roll and ad lib in character, but he totally fumbles for, for anything to say after that. And then there's like several different edit points, which meant he wasn't actually fast enough in that moment mm -hmm. to ad lib anything in character but he still insisted his week eventual chat stayed in. So I just want to know how long did they wait for him to be like, no, no, wait, wait, I've got... I'll, 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 no, I'll get that, I'll get that. I'm trying to remember, I'm just trying to remember the word for it. Hold on, I've got a joke. Bethlehem. Nope. <laughs> oh, and then and because, again, he doesn't know what comedy is, they add this element that this character wants to smoke a cigarette, but he's not allowed to because, you know, cancel culture cancels everything and everything's ruined because liberals or whatever. But he thinks now that he's given this character a personality trait or characteristic that can be brought up repeatedly, he's done with his comedy. <laughs> right? Eli's not here, man. Just like... <laughs> you're that's, this is just oh. not classy. It, it, you're absolutely right. I and mean, that's that's not fair. In Eli's defense, garlic bread is totally different from cigarettes. It's a totally different <laughs> type of thing. There's way more nuance to garlic bread. <laughs> so It's something he said before in the past. No, it's right. It's, it, is. it is. Funny. All right. So now we, we get done with that character. Don't worry. He'll be back. <laughs> And and then we, we get this little bit that opens up with Eric Metaxas explaining that he loves being alone on Christmas. That's how he wants it. He wanted his family to disown him over those racist tweets. Oh, like, what was this? <laughs> this is so what sad. was going on here? <laughs> this is such a sad line. The best thing about Christmas is being alone. That <laughs> says everybody who nobody wants to spend Christmas with. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. It's not... Some people <laughs> enjoy solitude. So, Zen yeah, some people are just responsible. There's a pandemic on. We get it, Heath. We get yeah, it. There's science. Yeah, great you were just preparing for this the pandemic for every previous year. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> so, yeah, so he's like, I love being alone on Christmas. It gives me a chance to read one of my favorite books. And he pulls out this book. Now, this book is so comically short. It's 11 pages long. And I thought that was going to be the joke. But it's even worse. This is a children's book that he wrote. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that he just identified as one of his favorite books. Oh, my God. That, that he even asks us to clear out for him to read. So he says, could you clear out for 10 to 20 minutes? And I was like, well, <laughs> how about 30, 33 minutes, 30 seconds? You know, I'll come back just for the credits. <laughs> <Is that deep? laughs> so, yeah, so he starts reading this, this book that he wrote, which is apparently about Heath. 
I, I didn't. We just only got the first line. <laughs> it's a book about the giant lie that everybody's happy about the kids they had. That's what it's so, about. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, but they're all lying. Whatever. <laughs> I've talked to you when you're being honest. You're lying. It's Stockholm syndrome. It's nothing more than Stockholm syndrome. Parenting is <laughs> Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But as he's reading, he gets a knock on the door. Whoever could it be? Yes, they literally go with the whoever could it be shtick. And wouldn't you know it, it's Elf on the Shelf. <sighs> the latest seasonally fucking with your kid's ability to process reality for fun toy. <laughs> right? Oh, uh, this sketch is so rough. Okay, but there's a twist, isn't there? Is there? To this premise. Oh, yes, because he's large. He's not. He's bigger now. He's a human sized elf on a shelf. A shelf is small and he's big now. Imagine that. I mean, he's Imagine bigger that. than a shelf. There's no denying. He, I mean, he's bigger. Than, that, that's funny right there. He's bigger than shelves. He carries a shelf with him to show you how much bigger he is than it. He can <laughs> no longer sit on the shelf. Mm. so ridiculous of a situation. He even explains like the kids can't even lift me up to put me on the shelf. Yes. Long <laughs> silence, long silence, long yeah. silence. The thing is like hearing them deliver what are meant to be punchlines to total fucking silence actively hurt me. Like I was physically oh. pained watching them just <laughs> turn and, and mug to the audience and the audience give them nothing back. Oh, no. God, it's aching. They were in physical pain too because they were like, that was a joke about the rules of love on the shelf, asshole. Read a book. This is ubiquitous <laughs> thing about the detail of that thing, which is a Christmas thing. Oh, I was Fuck. saying, like, yeah, the stone cold non reaction mm. from the crowd was so bad, you started wondering if they'd walked out. Like, it was three jokes in a row where, like, clearly the audience didn't even realize a punchline had happened. Oh, it was like literally the next level down from what we saw is the audience just shooting the performers to death, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and without the any reaction from the audience and without the existence of any real punchlines at all, this sketch just descends into a very slow factual exploration of what it would be like if a toy was alive at <laughs> yeah. all. It's just a conversation <laughs> about that. Yeah. So eventually he realizes he's like, hey, you know what? I could be elf on a shed, huh? Because I would still... I would still be able to sit on one of those. Yeah, and they start talking about the structural integrity of sheds, and I felt like I'd been like warped into the dad corner at a gathering of my extended family. Like, but if the next thing they do is move on to talking about what roads they use to get to this place and which roundabouts to avoid on the way home, I know that's exactly what happened. Did you take the uh, A684? No, this road works on it. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, once you go past the school. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> I took the Bethlehem Tunnel, if you know what I mean. <laughs> what? And just when you're thinking to yourself, man, this sketch is bad, but it doesn't have any anti-Semitism in it. <laughs> Mensch on a bench shows up. Mm -hmm. Dressed as 1930s German propaganda. On a yes. bench. <laughs> Correct. Dressed as propaganda from Nazi Germany. Yes. Now, that was bad, but I guarantee you, the first draft was a rabbi riding a lesbian and they were just like, oh, no, God. cut, this is too much. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. It's going to be two different slur words. Yes, they rhyme. That's clever. We're not doing that. <laughs> and the, again, the audience, is just, they have no idea that this was even supposed to be funny. They're like, are we supposed to feel bad for the elf now? No. And and Eric Metaxas is trying to force the comedy here. And he's like, and he says, you're all so huge. This isn't making any sense. It's like, yeah, it's not his size. That's confusing me about all of this. That's, that's <laughs> not the big, that, that's lost me. <laughs> and, then, and then the Jewish character just looks around and goes, oh, was mentioned on a bench the whole thing. That's all I was here for, huh? I'm leaving now. I'm leaving now. Bye. Right? That's it? Yeah, because Eric's like, oh yeah, I'm not Jewish. And the mensch on a bench says, huh, such a pity you're not Jewish. You should be so lucky. It's like, yeah, the, the one thing we can say about Jewish people is that historically they've been blessed with nothing but constant good fortune. <laughs> that is the, the one it's historical line luck through luck all of Jewish there. history. <laughs> okay, we're done with me. Bam, 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 bam. Bagels. Later. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Merry <laughs> Hanukkah. Like, that's, what he, that's what Eric says. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Hanukkah. I have never ne heard the name of a holiday enunciated as a hate crime before. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so he leaves and then Eric and the sh the elf are standing there going like, wow, is this? I guess you're still here. So the skit's not over. And he's like, yeah, I guess I'll leave. And then he leaves and a dog attacks him. We can hear that happen. And that's it. That's <laughs> 
That was the punchline. Yep. A dog mauling an elf off stage. <laughs> like fucking Oedipus stabbing his eyes out. <laughs> so, all right. Oh, speaking of stabbing your eyes out, it is now time for some swamp wisdom. So Eric Metaxas introduces Duck Dynasty patriarch and guy who gets a whole subway car to himself when he goes to New York, <laughs> Phil <laughs> Robertson. Yeah, the the great Phil Robertson, as he's introduced. The great Phil Robertson, yeah. you know, the star of Duck Dynasty and the star of that viral CPAC clip where he fantasized about an atheist family being raped and killed. That great yep. Phil Robertson. That's the guy. Oh, I forgot about that. That's yeah. who it is. And he is more charming by far than Eric Metaxas. Mm. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, exactly, exactly. He's taller than negative zero feet. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, so they're doing this bit where they're walking around Manhattan and he's looking for squirrels to hunt because he's from the swamp and swamp people eat squirrels. That's the whole bit. Yeah, yeah, and the bit is, what, there's 8 million people live here? There's not enough squirrels for 8 million people to eat. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yep, that's so the painful. whole bit. And There's a bit where he kills a pigeon and a squirrel, and I have never a- envied wild animals more. I've never envied <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this happens in Central Park. Yes. He's firing a fucking rifle in Central Park, Manhattan, New York City. Yep. <laughs> that's... Insane. I wanted them to pan over and just show like cops frisking a black guy. He's yeah. like, come on, really? <laughs> <laughs> what, right there. Well, and then Eric Metaxas is like, wait, the cops are going to come. We can hear the sirens in the background. He's like, you can't shoot guns in Central Park. De Blasio's a communist. And he's like, don't worry. This is a really poorly written skit. I have a magical bag that'll take you to the swamps of Louisiana. I'm like, how is that better than a jail in New York City? I have a magical <laughs> bag that'll get us out of this skit that we don't have a turn for. Yeah, right. But yeah, exactly. So who is this for? Who is enjoying this? Who did they think was enjoying this? What? Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. So now they're in a swamp together, just chillax. And Phil starts waxing poetic about the meaning of Christmas and reminding us that there is literally no way of tackling that story that doesn't make it sound silly, awful, or both. <laughs> But imagine going through the effort of flying all the way to Louisiana together and not putting any effort into the, writing the script while you're there, or, or, or even on the plane. You know, just take a, take a pad and paper and scribble some stuff on the plane. You would have something to work with when you got there. Nope. Phil Robertson's looking over at him. Hey, what are you doing? You just uh, just watching uh, Netflix there? I figured maybe you would write up a... Uh... Because nothing happened. I was just in a skit with you and it worked out really bad. (laughs) So we're going to do that again? Do that again. Okay. Yeah. So Phil starts explaining to us because, you know, he's a master of logic about how impossible it would be for the Bible, for the beginning of the Bible to predict the end of the Bible. (laughs) Yeah. And therefore, Jesus is real. And then he adds, he's like, yeah, amazing how the Bible predicted Jesus. How could they have ever done that? And then they predicted Jesus coming back, which is awesome. (laughs) Can Can we use the bag to go somewhere else? And he says as well about how you you can't just dream up a story with that amount of history behind it. It's like, no, no, dreaming up a story with history behind it is easy after that history has happened. That's yeah, really it's, easy. It's and also, when the history's in front of it, that's the tricky bit. Yeah, that's the tricky bit. And also by history, you mean the rest of the Bible. So right. it's much more like writing the next Bond film, having seen the previous Bond films, and then pointing out how much they have in common in order to argue that Bond is definitely real. That is the argument you using it. It's exactly the same as that. Yeah, exactly. And and also, by the way, like we can read the Old Testament for ourselves, right? Like, so even as unimpressive as it would be if the Bible actually did predict the Bible, it doesn't. <laughs> right? Like the, they, they, they don't even get the wrong. fucking name of the guy right in the New Testament. It's supposed to be fucking Emmanuel, you dumbasses. Anyway, yeah, exactly. But yeah, we we have this whole big long how could a book predict what would happen in the book if it wasn't true moment can't cheat off the Asian kid if you can't read. Yeah. 
There's a lovely bit as well where he says that, you know, in the Bible, it says that Satan was told that someone from the seed of a woman will crush your head. And we know, you know, that that, that someone born of a woman is going to crush him. Is that how could the prophets have known that it would be someone born from a woman? Who would do it? It would be one of those, those people born from w- women. <laughs> So, and then, and, and Eric to that, he, Eric says, you know, Phil, it's great hearing you talk about stuff like this because, you know, you're not burdened by rationality or understanding or anything like that. <laughs> or personal hygiene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Very comforting. <laughs> and then there's this amazing fucking moment, which I thought was the absolute peak of the fuck. Well, okay. The second, second to the peak of the show, uh, him getting pissed at Victoria Jackson is still coming up where he goes. So, hey, Phil Robertson of Doug Dynasty, could you sing us a Christmas song? And he's like, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> End of bit. Yeah. That was you, it. It was amazing. Do you know any Christmas songs? I don't sing. <laughs> Great banter. Nice one. Yeah. <laughs> Most of those fucking songs are written by Jews. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but in lieu of a song, Phil's going to tell us a story around the kitchen table. You're here. Oh, and he he's one of those people who gets on a chair by stepping over the back of it like an absolute prick. Like a bad <laughs> you, <know what>? prick. <laughs> <laughs> you turn in the chair backwards to sit at your own table. We're, we're not we're, we're not facing each other. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah, so it was so he's just telling us the story. It was a dark and stormy night, and after the storm, they went out and they found this critter in a ditch in the yard. Okay. Why would there be a ditch in your yard? What are you doing? Why would you have that? To catch rainwater. I mean, it's your yard. You can have a ditch. <laughs> Where else you can have a ditch? You're, I'm not saying you're not allowed to, but I want to know what's happening there. You To catch rainwater? Is that what you said? Yeah. It's like, I, 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 I'm guessing like 50% of the houses in the country that have ditches out front for the rainwater. Wait, what? Why, why are you ditches? catching rainwater? Couldn't you just have like a barrel under your gutter? No, no, yeah, it's just a, this, so the so in any any kind of flood prone area, you always have ditches in the yard, and there's sort of like a drainage system that goes. Oh, sorry, to catch it to stop it. Oh, flooding because you. all of Louisiana is like 600 feet under sea level. Now I get it. Okay, right, yeah. Uh, so it's it's to catch it to stop it coming to you, rather than to catch it as a a retention. Well, yeah, yeah, you're later. not keeping it. No, no, it's just a, it's I thought you were that... saving it, and I was no. like, then oh. why? <laughs> <laughs> not well, just no, have a I, I'm not saying Phil Robertson doesn't have a drinking ditch. <laughs> <laughs> That's entirely possible. Just brings out a big straw. <laughs> <laughs> Tastes rainy. All right. <laughs> so yeah, so they go out, they look at the ditch, and they find a, they find a critter in there, and it's a, a it's a gator human bullfrog chimera, which he describes as, and I quote, forty percent human. 10% gator and the rest of it looked like a big old bullfrog. He had no idea how many percents were left after that. <laughs> also, if this is if this is half bullfrog, like a bullfrog is quite different from a human and a gator. So is it like down the left to right? Is it like a waist like a mermaid kind of thing? Is it just random bits? And he's done really well to identify the breakdown as well. Because if you if you gave me something that was half you well half bullfrog and then different parts human and alligator, I think I'd struggle to identify any one of those. Maybe the hands. If it was a human hand, I'd get it. But <laughs> right. the rest, I'd really find difficult. Which was the ten percent? The frog. Ten percent gator. gator. Yeah, it, it was ten percent gator. How did he notice that? Like just a twist of gator. Like if you know, if you, if I see a frog person, I'm not gonna notice the ten percent gator. Ten percent gator. Maybe if it's just like the top teeth, the top of the, <laughs> that's gator. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. That'd be cool. I think if you gave me a bullfrog that had like ten percent gator, I'm not sure I'd really notice. If it was proportional, I'm not <laughs> sure right. I'd notice. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so. I'd call it a frog, probably. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so it was, and this whole story, it doesn't go anywhere or anything, right? This is all just a setup so that Eric Metaxas can lip sync over some other song while wearing his silly swamp bullfrog man outfit. But that's just like a, a beard and glasses. Like Exactly. You could have just shown this without saying that he was this swamp bullfrog man. You could have shown only, the bit that follows is not in any way connected. No. It's just him lip syncing to an unironic song. <laughs> yep. Well, is this not a song about 
What would it be like if Phil Robertson was fucking your mom? <laughs> That's the song, right? Yes. Yeah. That, so clearly he was like, Phil Robertson, can you do one more scene with me? Will you? I wanted to sing this song. And he was like, I'll do it if I'm fucking your mom. And that's the song. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, okay. Also, they try to make out like this big mythos behind it, as we've as we explained there, and it, it cuts to the the video that this this swamp thing kind of released as a kind of a, a country hillbilly kind of a record, mm-hmm. and the video is on a grainy VHS, and it's got the kind of like the wobbles to it that a VHS would have, but it's got the timestamp in the bottom left corner of May yes. 2018. Yes, and I don't know that a lot of people recording on VHS <laughs> two years ago. <laughs> Well, I was in Louisiana, so, you know, who knows? I missed that. He was using a VHS recorded two years ago. (laughs) Where would you even get that? How would you even find the hardware and the the tapes? What? (laughs) What would you hook it up to? How did it... It doesn't have an HDMI cord. No, it'll be a SCART cable. It'll be a SCART <laughs> cable. Just welding a USB into the side of it. <laughs> no, it's no organ. All right, so yeah, but the song is Daddy Looks a Lot Like Santa. We listen to this entire fucking song while we watch Phil Robertson pat his wife on the back like he's trying to burp her. <laughs> <laughs> but like it's a it's a it's a legit song from 1965. I had to look it up because I thought this sounds way too well made for something that would be in this variety right. of performance, and it is way too well made because it's a legitimate song, which just means he's lip syncing to a song that's 50 years old. And if there's any humor in it, it's humor from 1965. It's not your humor. Yep. You're just lip syncing to someone else's gag, basically. <laughs> well, but but he's got the funny beard and the glasses. You see. And, and the Duck Dynasty guy. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Hilarious. That's the whole <sighs> fucking bit. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. As bad as all that shit was, I'm pretty sure that's the literal high point of this experience. So we're going to take a break in its afterglow. First, let me give Act 3 the hard sell, though. How could that possibly be the high point? What do I even mean the rest of it is worse? Is Victoria Jackson going to fucking sing or something? Find out the she answers will. to these questions <laughs> and more when we return for the cacophonous <laughs> conclusion of Christmas in New York with Eric Metaxas. Oh, come on. What are the odds that any of them are even going to see this show? Right, but what if a non-Native American sees the show and then tells them about it? Fine, fine, whatever. What about Armenians? <sighs> no, and for the same reason. <sighs> okay. Well, I can at least make fun of Jewish people, right? That's yeah, no, you're always allowed to Eric, that. we've been over this like a million Mel times Mel Brooks now. does that all the time. Yeah, and Chris Rock makes jokes about black people, Eric. Okay, so you're saying I can make fun of black people. N- no, I'm saying That's literally what you just the exact said. opposite of that. What? No, I'm saying they only get away with those jokes because they belong to that group. Ugh, fine, fine. Just give me a list of the races I am allowed to make fun of. And I'll work off of that no, list. No, and no, do, there are no like that. races that you're allowed to make fun of. Well, okay. I should at least get to make fun of my own race, right? I can do that. Okay, right. Fine. Yes, absolutely. You could 100% make jokes about white people. I, I meant Greeks. But you're, you're, you're not Greek. I'm absolutely Greek. You, you are not Greek. You've just got a kind of Greek name. Yes, I am. My, my dad was Greek. All right, all right. If you did make fun about Greeks, right, make fun of the Greeks... What would you make fun of them for? They're a bunch of ill-tempered assholes. Every single one of them. Yeah, okay. I think we'd get away with that, to be honest. Who fuck dogs? Greeks Right, dial that one back. Dial that one right back. Okay, okay. Uh, Greeks have foreplay with dogs. A bit further back than that. They get fucked by dogs. The top and bottom thing wasn't my issue with it. Cancel culture is ruining everything. Fine. Just like, uh, uh, I'll put it this way. Fuck Whatever group I'm still allowed to say after I say fuck. Damn right. And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to open on Eric once again struggling to get through that 11-page book of his that he wrote (laughs) when all of a sudden he hears sleigh bells on the roof. It's so good because he's like, oh, hello. (laughs) I was just sitting here in the dark while you watched my home video. (laughs) 
on VHS with Phil Robinson. <laughs> there's, you have to remember, there's a live studio, yep. not studio audience. There's a live theater audience <laughs> at this thing. Yeah. Yeah. So the so that we hear the sleigh bells. He looks up. So we'll know they're supposed to be coming from up. And a guy walks in in a Santa hat and a Santa beard. And I immediately said, oh, Jesus Christ, is that Mike Lindell of my pillow fame? And it was. God I, damn I can't it, it was. You guys and the 40 or so people in the audience recognize him. I had in my notes 40 or so people in the, in, in the audience all cheer when they when they recognize him. Do they are they supposed to know who he is? And you recognized him even though he was with God. the hat and the beard. I was so Why is my pillow guy in my life all the fucking time right now? He keeps popping up fucking everywhere. I know his name now. I didn't want to know his name. It's Mike Lindell. I yep. know that now. Yep. That's in my fucking, my bites are taken up. And, and Eric's opening question to him is, how did you get here tonight? Did you fly? And I thought, yeah, I am 100% in the dad corner of that family guy. <laughs> did you fly through uh, the interstate or did you, turn, uh, did you take the fly over? Of course you did. Yeah, that makes, uh, yeah, yeah, that makes yeah, good yeah. sense. That's uh, the quickest way this time of, uh, so- <laughs> of day. <laughs> I got to tell you, one of my proudest like public accomplishments as an atheist is how quickly I pegged this asshole right here as a conservative misogynistic bigot. <laughs> right. Like, cause, because like right when his commercials came out, I noticed how conspicuously he wore his big ass cross in the commercials. Right. I it did was a whole like fucking Flav of Flav. Yeah. It was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. So I did a whole fucking diatribe about it. And a lot of people were like, oh, come on, man. He's just he's showing his religion. And, and then, of course, then he comes out and he's like anti women and he's just pro fucking conversion therapy and he's trying mm. to sling all these bullshit cures for the pandemic he's awful in every possible he's fucking sponsoring eric metaxas and i'm like all right i nail you guys gotta give me that one i nailed that (laughs) he's not only sponsoring eric metaxas he's right now doing an infomercial inside of a variety show he is yeah he starts trying to sell us towels. This is not the even second pillows. weirdest thing to happen in the middle of this variety show in terms of the <laughs> thing they cut to. And this is the one that annoys and upsets me more. I'd say. <laughs> He's selling towels now. Yeah. He brings out his towels. And <laughs> he hands a pack to Eric Metaxas. And Eric Metaxas is like, yeah, these are great towels. They really work. Exact words. Yeah. What a weird claim. They really work. What the fuck does that mean? It's a towel. Yeah. It's such a weird claim for like a big rectangle of cloth that you rub yourself on. Like, what was yes. he doing with towels? Who, who well, wait a minute. Works <laughs> previously. Did you say rectangle? Because I've been using fucking spheres of towel. <laughs> <laughs> wow, like an actual 3D towel. Yeah. Like, like a medicine ball or something. Okay, and like, I, you know, that was a joke, but this is when Mike Lindell, the My Pillow guy, is like, no, 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 seriously, we... We discovered a new towel technology. It dries you the fuck off. Like, yeah. dries you right up. None of that communist bullshit. Yeah, he literally says, like, he's like, well, you know, we've all had towels that don't dry you. I'm like, no, the fuck we haven't. No one except the sweatiest, most overweight person has ever had that problem. What the fuck? fuck are you talking about and then he starts getting he's like well you know xenophobia and you're like really xenophobia and he's like yep it's because we started letting all them chinese towels in in 2006 <laughs> yeah he might as well come out just like completely naked sopping wet being like <laughs> i use my towel and i'm still sopping wet there must be a better way <laughs> the rectangle <laughs> yeah uh, God, I do that. We let overseas towels into this country and that makes them start to feel bad. It's like, yeah, because famously foreign cotton is the last thing that you oh, want. Oh, yeah, right. No, you wouldn't want that. <laughs> yeah, but apparently Chinese towels are hydrophobic. So he's t- and then he starts like he's telling the audience, he's going like, you get rabies. a set of towels. You get a set of towels. You get a set of towels. Yeah, yeah. It's like you get a towel and you get a towel and you get a towel. And, and that's the whole audience, actually. Yeah, all, the- all, three, all three towels. That's, <laughs> thank God we didn't have a more full room. <laughs> Cameraman's waving him off. I don't. I and don't if you see. all reach under your chairs, actually, a lot of empty chairs. We're just going <laughs> to hand them out. Don't reach under your chairs. <laughs> and there's a line from Eric, which is incredible. He says, "Yeah, they don't teach this kind of towel history in schools. Why not?" And it's like because Betsy DeVos bought her way into education first, so Mike was just left with a COVID nineteen task force. <laughs> <laughs> Why would they teach towel history in school? <laughs> so, yeah, but, but I will say, though, 
free bath towels. That was the biggest goddamn applause line of the night. <laughs> so. It was. Yep. <laughs> and that's 100% because this entire audience are homeless and this is their access to a towel. That's what it yeah. is. Like, right, I can use something. <laughs> right, here. right. Oh, this will keep me warm. <laughs> <laughs> and then he literally gives us a promo code. Yes. During, oh, again, a live in a theater <laughs> variety show. He's giving you a promo code <laughs> for bath towels. For 30% off bath towels. Yeah, I mean, fuck me. He ends the bit by pitching a promo code. Like, how embarrassing. Can you imagine making a living hawking goods to your fan base using promo codes? Uh, I mean, okay, God, it's okay. so embarrassing. All right. We, <laughs> we just directly ask him for money most of the time. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. So, no, he goes, he gives us this. This He's like, you know, I'm going to give free towels to everyone in your audience. And if you use this promo code, you can get 30% off to which Eric Metaxas's actual line Delivered as though he means it, or as close as he can get to that is, quote, Mike, that's insane. You're going to go out of business. <laughs> Turn off the TV. Do not call us. We will lose money on this deal. We are dying. I've gone crazy. <laughs> I'm slashing prices. <laughs> so... All right, so but and then we cut back to fucking asshole Greek guy character because you can't get enough of that guy, huh? Oh, God damn it. Got to really dig into that funny mustache he was wearing. It's not just a voice. It's also a mustache, Heath. 100%. <laughs> He's just like, guys, I'm going to do some mustache space work for like 45 <laughs> minutes, and we are going to use all... All of Every it. goddamn bit of <laughs> it. Because as I announced earlier during an edit, we are not able to edit. It's all going in. <laughs> and the thing is, it's so weird, this bit, because they've got him talking, but they put different audio of him talking over him talking because clearly <laughs> yep. they couldn't get a decent take of him at any point <laughs> with the camera. He must have had to go back and dub the entire thing. I have no idea. Oh, it, the, and the whole bit is he's trying to tell us about the Greek jingle bells and how it's more Christian than American jingle bells. Yeah. That's the conceit. Jingle bells was written by the ancient Greeks in Boston, Massachusetts in 1950. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so just right over there. Round of applause for, uh, for right over there, everybody. <laughs> and he says as well, well you know, because Greek is the language of the Bible, so it's the language of God. So, yeah, except the bits written in Hebrew, like the Old mm -hmm. Testament, and Hebrew is the language of God is not a connection they want to explore mm -hmm. too much on this particular variety show. <laughs> Yeah, I'm writing in my nose like, dude, who are you even making fun of now? And then they bring the mood down with a little reminder that disabled kids in Africa would kill to have a Christmas special as nice as ours. What happened here? <laughs> yeah. it, it cuts to a black screen with in places where medical care is nearly non-existent. It's like, yeah, but those places are America for one thing. <laughs> but, oh, it's a hard gear change. It's such a weird gear change. It's the strangest thing that happens. Yeah, that's a really good point. They're trying to do like, you know what? It's time for the white man's burden section of the program. But yep, yep America would be the burden of America right now. We sure Huge. could use some hospital ships parked right outside. You know who? You know who's the shithole country? The country that's not allowed to go to Canada. We're the shithole country. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, if you went to Cape Town right now and turned the TV on, you'd see slow motion ads showing like American children walking through the streets of like Detroit, <laughs> it's like uh, the, the South African version of uh, that uh, that singer who Sally does the Struthers? Army Angels song. That's what I'm yeah, saying. Sarah right exactly. McLaughlin. Yeah, exactly. Cockroaches crawling over their faces and stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I, I As they're showing this, I'm like, yeah, I bet they help people get abortions too, huh? With those hospitals. No. No? Yeah. Weird. Yeah. Christian missionaries are super great for Africa. That's, <laughs> it's that's a really good point, guys. We're being said. Yeah, exactly. Fuck. They spread more AIDS than the head of our CDC. Oh, Jesus That's not good. Christ, that's so bad. <laughs> Fucking missionaries are horrible for Africa. Yeah. Ugh. And honestly, Redfield was probably on one of the missionary boats that we were looking at in this scene. <laughs> I would be 0% surprised. I'd be more surprised if he hadn't been than if he had. Yeah. Mm hmm. All right, so now Eric Metaxas shows up and he explains to us that this entertainment miscarriage is really just like one of them Dean Martin Christmas specials, if you think about it. <laughs> He's trying to push so that hard. so hard. 
he's he, like he's buying into it so much that when the doorbell rings, he's like, "I bet that's Frank Sinatra." And we're like, "It's it it is likely as Bob Hope or Dom DeLuise, motherfucker." What the hell are you? <laughs> yeah, it's like any minute now, the doorbell will ring. It'd be Frank Sinatra. Oh, you know the next best thing, former SNL actress fallen on hard times, Victoria <laughs> Jackson. <laughs> Yeah, but they couldn't write that on the screen when she came out. She comes out, and the best they can do for her, Chiron, is her Twitter handle. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Victoria Jackson, former person you've heard of. She walks onto the set, and she's like, what a lovely show. No ad libs. That's not on the fucking <laughs> <laughs> Yes. This is the moment. This is where he breaks, and she just goes. She's just about to say, what a lovely living room you have here. And he says, and I quote, I know, but it's not on the teleprompter, so save it. <laughs> it's In amazing. exactly that tone. <laughs> There's nothing like, you know, jovial or friendly about it at all. <laughs> He might as well be like, Morgan, cut that. Moving on. <laughs> In front of a live audience. It's incredible. And I've got a new theory about this, the more I think about it, because they are, they're about to do a song together. We'll talk about it. The song goes horrifically badly on her part. I think if he'd have just let her ad lib there, that song might have gone a lot better. Uh -huh. I think that's her going, Absolutely. oh, right, you want me to stick to the script, mate? Then let me show you what I can do. She's delightful. She's horrible, but she's delightful in comparison. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, so that's what, ha like, it is way easier to read this as her getting progressively more pissed off at her agent for making her do this throughout this scene than any other explanation <laughs> that I can come up with in my head. Mm. It is so fucking bad. Do you feel like she ate a whole lot of peanut butter for spite right before this scene? Because <laughs> that's what the singing sounds like. It seems like it had to be a bit like a gag on purpose. Yeah. yeah. And they even do like an intro gag into it with saying, well, we'll sing a song about marshmallows, but I don't know that song. What would it go like? A bit like this. So like, first of all, it's weird that they're about to sing a song that they said they they just said they don't know. That's a really weird way to introduce it. <laughs> but then she starts f genuinely forgetting the lyrics and says, oh, she's yes. just telling the truth. She genuinely doesn't know this song, <laughs> but she can't hit any of the notes because she does not know this song. She's sight reading this song just like she's doing the, uh, the sketches. <laughs> yeah. And she actually steals one of his lyrics. There's yep. like one of those back and forth fourth duet moments and there's a teleprompter so it's probably pretty clear that like these lyrics are for me these are for you and like different colors or something but she keeps singing through one of his lines and he's so fucking angry it's the best because <laughs> he he starts singing he has to stop oh I was so ready for him to sucker punch her at any minute. Yeah. <laughs> so I, like, I wrote my notes at this point, too, as this song wrapped up. I'm like, OK, I've changed my mind. Even if I found out definitively that Christians were right about everything, I'd stay an atheist. I would rather burden hell for eternity than be on the team that produced this. <laughs> <laughs> also, they try to dance together. Oh, a little God. Bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, dance is the wrong word. They sway. They try to just yeah, do right. the most very basic thing <laughs> where they would try. at the same time sway left and then sway right together. And they get it wrong every single Ooh. time they try to start doing it, which is mathematically almost impossible. Right? Like, <laughs> just <laughs> guessing you would get it 50-50. Right? You would think. <laughs> you would think. Yeah, so finally, at length, this fucking song ends, but the two of them are not done yet. They're going to do another song. They're going to have a little back and forth here, but there's a yet another song that the two of them are going to sing to come. But first, we have to do the little bit where she's going to offer to sing O Little Town of Bethlehem and, and, and show us that she can sing it in all different keys. Right? <laughs> yeah. No, but she can't, though. Nope. She's like, yeah, so do you want me to sing it like uh, soprano, alto, or baritone? He's like, oh, why don't you give us a little test run? And she forgets to make soprano and alto be different things. Yep. 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 So she just sings the same thing twice and then does baritone, and it's it's, uh, it's a punchline. And, and everything she's doing around this as well, she's, she ad-libs an awful lot around this as well. And uh, he is so fucking angry oh, yes. with her by this yes. point. And he's like, could you just stop ad-libbing? Oh, <laughs> he <laughs> totally does. <laughs> so good. He totally does. He's, he, she stop says, it. Oh. I'm very scared. I don't know what. Yes. And <laughs> mm, my pillow promo code in New York. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, so she starts singing. She's fucking hocking up and swallowing phlegm as she goes. Mm -hmm. It's hard to believe 
that this was not bad on purpose. But ultimately, they settle on doing a jazzy rendition of Silent Night. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's <laughs> even in set, is setting this up, she keeps out living just to fuck with him. He's like, do you know any Christmas carols you'd like to sing? And she says, I know all of them. And then she pauses and goes, and every verse as well. And she's clearly just fucking with him. <laughs> and he can't take it. Absolutely. I'm 100% back on board with everything at this point. <laughs> so, so good. Now, so when they start doing this jazzy silent night, and by jazzy, I mean they're just yelling constantly. Mm. I started to think that this movie only existed as Gambate and that we're the only people that ever watched it. Like they did it knowing we'd have to watch it and that was their <laughs> only reasoning. I think it had 6,000 views on YouTube. Yeah, but that was Eric Metaxas and his record. Since January of last year. Yeah. <laughs> and, and remember, you, you pre-announced that you're doing this episode. So like a bunch of your listeners have gone away to watch this as well. So right, and you can take a good chunk of that uh, credit for yourself as well. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, that's where all those thumbs up came from, I'm sure. Yeah, so, but yeah, and, and they're trying to like, look, they're not trying to sing this well. They're trying to be funny, but like in the way that you would try to distract a pissy two-year-old, right? That level level of comedy were they trying to be funny i think that I they can't were tell i think eric metaxas was still trying i think he was trying as hard as he could yeah yeah i i couldn't tell if the gag is that they were bullshit at this or if the gag was that she's really bad and was ruining what he thought was an amazing performance whether he was trying to do it straight and she was supposed to be like fucking it up but i, I couldn't tell which of the lines they were going for because he's he's just really bad he's just shouting flatly Mm -hmm. Yeah, they hit that sweet spot between good and intentionally bad. That's the perfect <laughs> spot for comedy. What is exactly in for the us between anyway. those two things? <laughs> also, something enormous falls down just off camera. Oh, yeah. During this That's song, right. And he gets so mad again. <laughs> he's furious about the ad limbing, and then it's like, boom, 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 boom. And he's like, Trap, what the fuck? <laughs> n-word yeah exactly <laughs> all right so yeah so mercifully that eventually comes to a close we go back to chain smoking greek guy some more so they can ask his greek character to talk about eric metaxas's favorite subject eric metaxas <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And I really wanted them to ask that same question to Victoria Jackson, you know, what she thinks about <laughs> Metaxas, because I think she'd have found out a lot to say that wasn't just making fun of his name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So we get our last little visit from his Greek character. And now it's time for a rousing closing number. Uh, he brings out the choir and it's immediately obvious why he saved the actual talent for the very end, right? Like, could you even imagine trying to watch this movie if, if we'd been reminded what talent looked like up front? <laughs> also, he changed his jacket. Yes. He is now wearing a kimono tuxedo jacket, <laughs> but with his <laughs> same tuxedo pants that don't match from earlier because <laughs> he didn't have time. They added... Just that little extra minute of the Greek professor thing, just so he could change jackets again. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently. Very clearly. So, yeah. So, yeah. So we get this choir and they're good, like compared to what we've seen so far. They're not good compared to choirs necessarily. Yeah. They're, they're just like competent. They're fairly well harmonized. You've got mm -hmm. one ginger haired lady in the choir who is constantly terrified by the sounds coming out of her mouth. <laughs> like she is not in control of what is happening with her body and she just wants it all to stop. She's got that look in her eyes, which is which is enjoyable. <laughs> and you've got a very silver haired guy in the middle who is really, really pleased he got to stand in the middle and <laughs> cannot hide that from anyone. That guy was pumped and was about to sell us Viagra. Yes. So he was having a good day. And the guy to his immediate right, or maybe two guys over to his right, looked like the exact middle ground between Eli and Moishi. It was, uh, you don't, you guys don't get to see Moishi on the show, but it was, it's, uh, it was fucking uncanny. That's a hard average to find mathematically. Right? That's like a lot of weird dimensions you got to figure out. He managed it though. And it was almost like they only had the rights to the first 40 seconds of this song. So they had to keep doing it over and over again. This was so insanely repetitive. And then at the end, they all just started yelling the words at each other because they didn't have another way to close it, I think. <laughs> I thought it was just going to carry on getting louder and shoutier until one of them passed out. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, and this is this great moment. So they they wrap up. Eric Metaxas 
hurries back on stage while everybody's still clapping for the choir so he can know what it's like to stand before a true ovation. <laughs> <laughs> he might as well dive in front like the bodyguard. Like, I got applause. They hit me. They hit me. I got applause. This counts. <laughs> Stole it. So, yeah, he comes out. He starts thanking Victoria Jackson, but he's pointing at Mike Lindell uh, when he does it. <laughs> I love that moment. And she looks <laughs> genuinely amazed by it as well. Oh, they're so pissed at each other right now. Like, he was mad that he had to thank her at this point. Yeah. He, he thanks all of New York City, and I, I don't live there anymore, but I'm sure that New York would be fine with me speaking on his behalf when I say, fuck you, Eric Metaxas. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> yeah, he, he said, I'd like to thank Jesus, uh, I guess, essentially, for dying in order to excuse this sin in advance. <laughs> <laughs> and then he runs out of thank you stuff way faster than he expected. So the music's still going for a while right behind yeah, him. Yeah. So now Eric Metaxas and the fucking My Pillow guy have to dance <laughs> for a long time. And My Pillow guy's try he he tries to dance for a second and then he's just like I I'm doing clapping man. I don't know. But he can't even do the clapping. He it's just Nope. He just needed to clap in very simple four. It wasn't like a complex meter. It was fucking four, four. And he was missing the claps. It was fantastic. It was the whitest close in the history of television. Yeah. <laughs> Except for when they actually closed the music. Oh. <laughs> and then <laughs> there's like three seconds of Eric Metaxas and my pillow guy being like, yeah, I'm still dancing. I need to stop, stop dancing. Stop, 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 stop. Okay. <laughs> I stopped dancing. Once you got the momentum behind you, it's hard. Well, but that no, but that's not the close close because of course we've got to get the my pillow promo code one final time. Oh, God, that's so <laughs> rough. It's so so rough. It's just the, the most cynical and shameless plugging and shilling I've ever seen. It's so bad. <sighs> Is your towel technology not working for you? <laughs> All right. So, either you guys got any idea what the moral of this story was? Um, the right is starting to get better at comedy and it's making lefties nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Counterpoint, Eric Metaxas lives on Fifth Avenue right next to Central Park in Manhattan. Mm. Oh, also, all right, well. <laughs> the reason for the season is axial tilt, fucking assholes. Damn it. <laughs> all right, well, Marsh, thanks so much for suffering alongside us one more time here. Uh, anything you want to plug while we've got you on? Yeah, uh, you can check out A Skeptic that I'm the editor of. We've been publishing loads of really great stuff there at uh, skeptic.org.uk. And yeah, check me out on uh, Skeptics with a K for uh, me talking about skeptical stories and doing investigations and stuff like that. Awesome. And of course, just check the show notes. We will have all of that available in a handy dandy. Link. Aren't you on a show called Incredulous too sometimes? It oh, occasionally comes out. Once oh yeah, there was an episode just out. Episode 49 yeah. from three months ago has just been published. So uh, that is <laughs> that is timely of our, our regular satirical up to the minute news satire program. Topical. Um, which yeah. you were on, Heath. It was fun. I was not on that one. I'm on the one that's been recorded for a long time, but is not out yet. That's right. Oh, that's episode 50. That, that'll be out soon. I believe soon. episode 50. Uh, yeah, well, you can sure look when. for that one the next time two planets are visible together, <laughs> the next time we have that that type of alignment. Yeah. It, it might be out before the end of the year. I think it's going to be out before the end of the year. <laughs> oh, wow. I literally tweeted what Noah just said a couple days ago. <laughs> All right, so while that's going to do it for our review of Christmas in New York with Eric Metaxas, that's not going to do it for the episode yet, though. We still need to coax you back out next week. So tell us, Heath, what's on deck? Well, Eli's not here to name another fucking Christmas movie. <gasps> so Sons of Thunder, episode two is what Fuck we're doing. yeah. All right. So that killer to dies to today. <laughs> All right, so with the death of a tacular to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 279 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Marcia, and an even bigger thanks to all the Patreon donors for helping make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and thereby earn a little access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Ride, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of B. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotty with Jeffs on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check your life this week. For Heath and Wright and Eli Bosnick, I'm the Lucius. Promise to work hard to earn another check next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club clothes. Victoria Jackson went on to 
vomit in her mouth and swallow it back down during her testimony at a Michigan election <laughs> hearing. Mike Lindell went on to use the N-word on tape. I'm just putting my nickel on it right now. Two nickels. Eric Metaxa's 2021 Christmas special would have included a skit about Hillary Clinton drinking baby blood, performed by the couple who pointed guns at the BLM march. <laughs> <laughs> 100%. Oh, two nickels on that one, too. <laughs> got my dad an Oculus for Christmas. He just got it yesterday. <laughs> so I got oh, to have really? the, Yeah, I have the I got to have the amazing like talking my 70 year old father through how to set up his because uh, it's the easiest thing in the fucking world. It's like, you know, download this app on your phone do all the things it says you know <laughs> it's that's all it is and he's like download it from where i'm like well where do you get your apps on your phone and he's like they're already on my phone mm-hmm. I'm like, I, what no, channel they, is the vcr yeah, supposed to yeah, be yeah, on no put that down you're not don't why are you holding the vcr control why do you have a vcr where did you oh, get God. that i get that with my dad my dad's only in his 50s he's not 60 yet and he's like that and he's also borderline illiterate he's got very mm. he's, he's he didn't do any school or anything like mm-hmm. that so he, he can't really read he uh, the text messages i get from him are completely incomprehensible <laughs> and he has no <laughs> idea how his phone works he only just upgraded to a smartphone last year and he does not understand how any of it works so uh, the idea of teaching him to do anything on his phone just fills me with with absolute dread well so my dad is <laughs> absolutely the gadget guy my dad is the kind of guy that you buy a VR headset for in his 70s, right? right? Um, so he, I mean, he loves new technology. He just doesn't understand any of it uh, <laughs> now. And it was, oh, it's just hilarious. At first, I'm trying to tell him, I mean, it, my mom is texting me his questions and I'm trying to do it through her. Oh, it's just a disaster. And I can't call him to do it because he has to do it on his phone and he doesn't understand that you can do both of those things. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, it was fun. It was a ton of fucking fun. But now, what you like? I'm, he's gonna get uh, pro putt on it, and he and I can play uh, VR putt putt together. And ah, oh, nice. That's pretty fucking awesome. I'm pretty stoked about that. I guess you won't see him over Christmas. He's not in the same state or area. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm. And usually, my my dad and I get together a couple of times a year to play golf. It's the only time I play golf anymore. Uh, but mm. at least a couple of times a year, we'll find a chance to get together. We haven't been able to do it at all this year. And I'm like, fuck it, man. You know, I, I honestly, I took all the money I saved from smoking, or from mm. not smoking this year and spent it on Christmas. I, I, oh, I put it in, in my Christmas fund and, and I was able to kind of go nuts on everybody. So, Ah, oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, speaking of which, thank you so much for the hamper uh, that arrived as well. It was really lovely. Right is up. that what called does, a hamper? What does hamper mean to you? And, and what does that mean? Because we put dirty clothes with shit and cum <laughs> on them right? in a hamper. Right, right. So we have laundry baskets mm-hmm. and I, uh, you wouldn't really call them a hamper. <laughs> but a hamper here is like a picnic basket type thing. Okay. Well, no, it, it's, it's more of a, like, yeah, a gift filled with different interesting foodstuffs. Okay. All right. Okay. So not a hamper common. here is not exactly, it's not a laundry basket. It's like a laundry trash can, right? It's a tall trash can shaped laundry basket right okay that's well i didn't get one of those so if you did no. send that, <laughs> that's then, uh, that's i was because we put eli arrive. in charge of it i was like and that's not <laughs> you know i mean you can see there was some gag he had in his mind he's like no no sean penn was supposed to be bees the hamper means you know <laughs> some weird shit that was you know so i was like okay wait a minute what did you did you get we just des- we decided on something together. Are you sending you a trash can of half-eaten pears? Because that's <laughs> technically what we said. He could have construed that. Oh, hang on. I think I'm a little hot on my mic. Let me just turn myself down slightly. All right. Um, all right. Am I topping out now? La la la. Oh, that's still topping out. Let's see if it's the other direction. La 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 la. Okay, that's probably okay. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. Well, thank no, you no, for no. The, the 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 food stuff in a parcel that was delivered by. <laughs> <a man. laughs> You're quite welcome, man. Merry Christmas, <laughs> and a, and a very happy New Year. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Hi, Morgan. Merry, Merry Christmas. We didn't get you a hamper. You <laughs> oh a, shit. We got you a Christmas bonus. That's what you, we we got. It was like it was like it was like you know we get you. We, we Marsh the shitty Marsh got the shitty thing. You got the better thing. <laughs> so, so you know. Anyway, okay, here we go. <clears throat> Actually, I think I sent 
Mar- I, well, fuck. I just, <laughs> I think I sent you something, Morgan. I sent you a hamper. Uh, so you will get a hamper if you haven't already. I, I don't actually, I don't think you will have. So I just ruined it. But, you know, anyway, here we go. <clears throat> Morgan, can you cut this before you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.